Harleys are expensive, and if you naively thought that they were going to get cheaper because of the pandemic, I know a Nigerian prince who desperately needs to transfer $5 million into your account, and he'll do that as soon as you give him all of your banking info. Insider information from the latest Harley shareholder meeting indicates that the plan is for Harley to raise their prices and become more of a premium product rather than attempt to produce affordable transportation for the masses. In this video, I'll go over the details of the plan and discuss whether this is the right strategy for Harley-Davidson to follow. I will also break down how I bought a brand new fully loaded Harley-Davidson Roadster from a dealer for the price of a stripped down Iron 883 at about 4,000 Canadian dollars savings and why this is impossible to do normally. Hit that subscribe button, click the notification bell, like the video, drop a comment if you'd like and stay tuned. Want a cheap Harley? Better buy a private sale because you're not going to find a reasonably priced one on a dealer's floor. Why? One of the goals in new Harley CEO Johann Zeitz rewire plan is to build Harley-Davidson into a premium luxury brand. In the quarter three shareholders meeting, one of the explicitly stated goals was to reduce the gap between new and used bikes. And if you thought that means they'll drop prices on new bikes, that Nigerian prince will be calling soon. Shipments of new bikes to dealers have dropped by almost 30% this year, which is a classic tactic in which a company limits supply in order to drum up demand and inflate prices. Harley dealers have also been instructed to offer top dollar for traded in Harleys in order to reduce the supply of bikes available in the used market. So the used bikes end up on Harley dealership floors and garner top dollar because those floors are short on new inventory and dealers are being instructed not to drop prices on remaining stock this year. If you want a Harley, your choices are much more limited this year than last. New hogs are mostly sold out and used ones may be the only game in town. If you want to buy a Harley, you may have to go used. The Harley Brass are hoping for a return to the good old days of the 90s and early 2000s when showrooms stood empty, customers waited for months for new bikes, and used bikes often commanded the same prices as new because they were available right now. So the question is, is this a smart strategy to use in a market ravaged by COVID or is the former CEO Matt Levitich's strategy of expansion into new markets and types of motorcycles the way to go? Harley has a history of contracting the company in tough economic times. During the economic crisis of 2008, they folded the Buell brand and reduced the number of bikes in the lineup. Similar strategies to the ones they're pursuing now. Since the current crisis started, Harley-Davidson has pulled out of less profitable markets around the world, axed their upcoming naked bike, delayed their adventure bike, and turned away from the Livewire Electric. They've streamlined company operations with an eye toward efficiency and intend to reduce the number of models offered in 2021 by 30%. How is all of this affecting dealerships? I've been to two recently and got an eyeful. One had almost no new bikes on the floor. The other had seven, yes, seven live wires sitting by the door. Prices weren't mentioned, but I know MSRP is 38,000 Canadian dollars, and that's probably what has led to the stagnation in sales. In addition to the live wires, there were also three Iron 883s, an Iron 1200, and a couple of soft tails, and no customers. I went in there to order a windshield for my roadster and was there for more than half an hour and the entire time no one else walked in. It was a weekday after work and that dealer was paying a full complement of staff to man an empty store. If that's not a depressing microcosm of how things are going for Harley Davidson, I don't know what is. They've definitely made Harleys more exclusive. So exclusive that the dealers can't even get them into the showrooms. Making the bikes hard to get isn't helping the dealers make a profit, and several long-standing dealerships have gone out of business. Quite frankly, no matter how exclusive the bikes are, if Harley sells fewer of them, they will make less profit. This type of strategy will lead to a decline of the motor company in the long term. Maybe the new Revolution Max engine will revitalize the brand, but given that it probably won't feel like a traditional Harley, maybe it won't. Perhaps the Pan America will bring the company back to life. But then again, seeing as big adventure bikes are losing ground to mid-sized ones, perhaps this is the wrong time to introduce a 1250cc ADV motorcycle. Sure, BMW has been selling tons of their big 1250s, but neither KTM, nor Ducati, nor any other manufacturer has even come close to challenging the mighty GS. So what could make Harley think that the Pan America will do better? Add the fact that Harley has now confirmed that the Sportster line is finished in Europe and there's not a lot to be optimistic about, unless a new Sportster comes out sooner rather than later. Check out my new Sportster video from a couple of weeks ago. 
Harley hitched its fortune to tradition and nostalgia and that's just less important to new riders than factors like price and performance. Which brings me to my new Harley. Why would I buy one given the fact that value and performance are high on my list of desirable characteristics on a motorcycle? Well, I have a bike that gives me those and I also value history and character. I just sold my Moto Guzzi and needed to fill that V-twin vibe longing deep in my heart. So I went out looking for a second bike that both me and my wife could ride. I knew I wanted a Roadster as it has the least cruiser riding position of any affordable Harley. It also has the Evo engine which, being 45 years old, is the one I grew up with. 1200cc of air-cooled rubber-mounted goodness to pleasantly chug down a country road without any care in the world is nice to have. The Roadster also had dual discs and a cafe look that, in my opinion at least, makes it the best looking Harley produced right now. The problem with it though was price. At $13,000 Canadian MSRP, plus $400 bucks if you want something other than black, plus $700 for ABS which is totally worth the money, plus the keyless start which totally isn't, plus freight charges and you're landing north of $15,000 Canadian, and that's without any accessories. For reference, the least expensive Softail, the Softail Standard with the Milwaukee 8 107 cubic inch engine, has a Canadian MSRP of $15,700. The Roadster is overpriced and Harley Corporate has mandated that dealers do not drop prices on new bikes below MSRP this year, so don't expect any year-end blowouts. But I got mine for 11339 Canadian and it had the two-tone paint, ABS and keyless security system on it. That's $100 less than a stripped down Iron 883 which has a smaller engine, crappier suspension and no passenger seat or pegs, never mind the ABS, security or fancy colors. The reason I got it that cheap? It was technically a 2019 bike and used. How used? The first owner never rode it. The bike had 28 kilometers on it which is 17 miles, all put on by the techs setting it up. So this is where you ask, how did the first owner buy a bike, never ride it and return it to the dealership at a loss of thousands of dollars? Well, this was a collector who owns dozens of Harleys and buys several every year. He had the bike delivered, didn't like the color and sent it back without even riding it. There was a street glide in the same dealership that had met the same fate. The only reason I could imagine why the color didn't suit him is that the bike is advertised as performance orange on the Harley website and it's clearly not orange. Well, I'm not complaining. I like the color and snapped up the bike as well as an extended warranty that keeps me covered for more than three years. Ultimately, I think I paid a fair price. The Roadster is worth about $11,000 Canadian, given what it is, and an Iron 883 should retail for somewhere between eight and 9,000. Neither one of them is a performance bike, although with its 1200cc, inverted forks and longer shocks, the Roadster is head and shoulders a better motorcycle than any other sportster in the performance department. I also hear the Roadster doesn't sell so well, not being a typical Harley cruiser. That and the approaching fall may have motivated the dealership to discount it more than usual. And discount it they could, despite directions stating otherwise from corporate, since this was technically a used bike. What makes the bike worth buying to me is my sneaky suspicion that the Evo is about to bite the dust. So owning a new one that if maintained well will last for the rest of my life seems like a good investment. And I stand behind that statement even if Harley comes out with the 100 plus horsepower new Sportster I speculated about two videos ago. Such a bike would be infinitely better than the current Roadster but wouldn't have near the personality or the aftermarket support. So no, you probably won't get a $4,000 discount on a new Harley. I just got extremely lucky. You probably won't get any discount on any Harley anytime soon if the higher ups succeed in making Harley into a luxury brand. It's a betrayal of their old time biker customers but the management doesn't care about those customers anyway and hasn't for years. If they did, they'd build an 80 cubic inch Evo with liquid cooled heads to pass emissions, stick it in an FXR frame, put dual discs on the front and put it out on the market for the price of the current Roadster. Then they'd build some scramblers and cafe racers around the Revolution Max motor to attract younger buyers. Now that would revitalize sales and profits. It might even save the company from a slow decline and eventual sale to a foreign corporation, which the board of directors would know if they actually rode motorcycles. So are you happy you'll get more for your current Harley on a trade-in or pissed off that corporate has decided to bend you over a barrel on the purchase of a new or used bike without actually making the motorcycles any better? Leave your comment below. Also, what do you think the various Harley models are worth versus their actual price? 
I'm curious how much others would pay for these bikes, especially overseas, as tariffs are inflating prices to ridiculous levels. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in any of the gear that Brooke and I wear or use, or the camera equipment we use to film this channel, the links are below. Everything listed there was bought with our own money and we are not sponsored by any company. However, the links below are affiliate links and the channel is paid a small amount for referring you to shop at no additional cost to you. We do not recommend any products that we are not satisfied with ourselves, but we do strongly urge you to do your research and select the correct size for items like helmets and clothing. As always, thanks for watching, your support is greatly appreciated. Please hit that subscribe button, give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment below. And whatever you ride, enjoy it. Wave at other bikers no matter what they're riding, we're all part of a brotherhood and sisterhood. Keep the rubber side down, shiny side up and may the spokes be with you.